I wanted 12. I wanted 12. Uh, I wanted 12. I wanted 12. Clean, Clean sweep. sweep! Let's go, baby. Oh, God. Three, God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm back. Uh, so <coughs> I survived COVID uh, just uh, and just in time too because we're about to celebrate our 50th episode of Blind Wine Tasting. Uh, so we've got an awesome theme put together by our good friends at Sometimes Always of six wines that are all under fifty dollars. So fifty under fifty. Oh, well, six under 50, but that's kind of what we're celebrating here. Uh, and if you want a discount code on any of these wines we tried today, uh, it's in the link below in our Discord channel. So without too much mucking around, let's get into it. Hell yeah, dude. Do you want to go for another, another take or? <sighs> no. Cool, uh, 50th episode, all of these are gonna be under 50 bucks, which is fantastically in my price range. So let's see what we've got. One number one. They're all reds. What a way to start a Monday. Six red wines. It's Friday. Good point. Even better way to start a Friday is thinking it's Monday. Oh, God. Come out tonight, guys. It's going to be a good one. All right. It smells delicious. It smells juicy. I think this uh, confected thing that carbonic maceration brings uh, always gives you this idea of confection. Yeah, yum. Holy shit, yum. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> this is awesome. This is sick. All right, this. It is like this perfect... Fresh red cherry. Go. Cool. Um, it's got this sort of like tart raspberry thing at the start of the palate, and then it doesn't really do too much from there, which is great for me because quite often with wines like this, it'll have this like really interesting fruit flavor at first, and then it'll be like, oh yeah, and here's all the other stuff that comes with drinking this wine. To be honest, if I was seeing that without, with or without knowing that, I would probably guess that it would definitely be under 50. I'm probably gonna, really interesting actually the oak treatment on this, and I'm not too sure if this wine has oak or doesn't have oak, but it has a really gorgeous chocolatey finish. All right, now, if all uh, hands off zero zero wines could be as perfect as this, we'd be in a really happy, happy world. Oh man, outstanding. One of the wines of the year for sure. Uh, we've got uh, definitely a rosé, but potentially knowing this show, Probably Pinot Gris. It feels like Tarble. It's got that kind of, it feels like light like a rose, but I've got a bit of guts to it as well. Bit of kind of grassy, stemmy herbaceousness there as well. Kind of feels like the first one, but less skin contact. That's really where I'm sitting. Tastes like water. What's going on there? You could drink lots of that very quickly. I reckon it does have a little bit of Chardonnay in it. That's gonna be my that's gonna be my big call for the week. So this is it's a new it's a new era in me calling things Chardonnay. Lovely. High voltage, uh, really, really cool acid line. Great structure, not as much um, fleshiness that I was expecting based on the color and the, the nose, which is kind of not unwelcome. This is that sort of halfway house really between Provence Rosé and Tarville Rosé. Kind of sits smack bang in the middle. I don't even know if astringent's the right, right term, but it feels like the right term. And this is really all about feeling here on this show. So it doesn't have that astringent quality, which is definitely not right, but it's cool. It's delicious. And it's really easy drinking uh, all year round, I'd say like summertime red. This would be my sort of go-to because it doesn't have that tannin, it doesn't have that spice. It's just refreshing. Number three, bit richer, bit darker, quite dark. It smells like wet cardboard, which is something that happens from time to time. Again, I just I, I don't know if it's because I haven't drunk wine in a little while, but I'm finding all of these to be delicious. I don't really know what that is. Stupidly high acid, moderate tannin. Um, you know, not like we're, we're Goldilocks uh, territory for tannin. This tastes like Christmas pudding. Um, it's got that really sort of, like when you've had sultanas soaked in, I haven't made a Christmas pudding, it's gonna show in a second. Sultanas soaked in brandy or some other spirit, and then you mix it with cake ingredients, and then you butter it and stuff like that. $30 uh, for that, uh, because there's no real complexity there. It is a nice kind of like a rustic little Wednesday night wine for a big piece of like big stew you've cooked up and you know, you've got all the off cuts of meat and you basically put it in a big pot to save you, save you money for the weekend. Lord knows we're doing that now. All right, wine number four. Uh, back into uh, what looks to be that sort of lighter color. Uh, it has that sort of faded rim, so maybe a little bit of maturation, and it doesn't look like it's been filtered to within an inch of its life. It looks looks pretty hands offy. Narrow? I don't know. It's purple, it's like a really bright purpley plum kind of fruits uh, or black grape or anything like that, but it's got this tobacco y, leathery thing and olive tapenade. So that kind of leads me down the Syrah path, but it's, it's pretty light for us. Sarah or Shiraz, so. A, a term that I've used quite a bit when describing the reds on this show is it's got a varnish quality to it. As in, you could dip your paintbrush in this and fix up your deck with it. Because that's kind of the, not that I've drunk a lot of varnish in my time, but you've been around deck hands that have been cleaning, 
don't know, deckhands. Who has a deckhand? Wow, another really racy high acid number. I think it's Merlot. But yeah, I feel, I'm gonna just, I have no idea what kind of Italian variety this movie. I'm just gonna go Nero. Three bottles, not my favorite Nero I've ever had. I don't know heaps, so I'm gonna guess Nero Davila, which is one of the few that I know. Uh, Nero, and I reckon that is gonna be a $35 bottle of wine. Cool drop, but uh, yeah, the, not up to the dizzying heights of the first three. Number five. Oh, fuck, chocolate. Again, but more so than the third one. Back into the deep reds, heavy reds. Uh, yum, that smells amazing. There, there is a portiness to this though. There is definitely uh, like, like it smells ripe and it smells potentially even fortified. You look at the legs running down the glass. So this is a high octane wine. There's, there's a bit going on here. Yeah, wow. Wow, interesting. I think this is Portuguese. Uh, unfortunately, the oak has really overpowered pretty much everything going on here, which is a shame. Uh, there, I think this will develop really nicely in time, but right now it's quite decadent and rich with oak and it's not that appealing. It's coconutty, it's vanilla-y. Unlike any red wine that I've had before, um, that does sort of taste like chocolate. I'm about it, it's super soft. Um, it doesn't have any of the like, uh, Brendan's favorite thing apparently when drinking wine is to have something that is like a, like a mistress kicking him in the teeth and telling him he's a good boy. That's not what I'm about with wine personally. He seems to like the dominating sort of wines. This is really soft and chocolatey and just, easy to drink and late night it's cold the fire's on get a bottle of this out when it's the last drink you're gonna have before you go to bed and i reckon you have sweet dreams because of this wine now we're cloudy can barely see through it this has probably come from basket range <laughs> here we go it's uh super hands-off like peanut uh it's got a pinot character but there is a bit of lifted va character but it's not overpowering to the wine. It's actually really well integrated. It actually carries the kind of perfumed flavor of the, the Pinot or whatever light bodied variety is in here. Lollies, it smells like lollies, which is something that happens with Natty wine a little bit. Delicious, 12. Uh, it's really quite compelling. Uh, appealing, compelling, compelling is a new word. We're making new words on this show. Follow up, keep up. Racy acidity. Gonna chuck in the special number. We all know the basket range number. Thirty-eight dollars, because they're they're all the same price. It reminds me of what I guess my producers like Gentle Folk were putting out probably like five or six years ago, when they were really focused on being like true to this like hands-off filtration style, or like or zero filtration, like just getting things in a bottle of this like light, bright nouveau style. I think there's a little bit of Pinot Noir in there. Um, I don't think it's Chardonnay, like wine number two. Yeah, Pinot. But yeah, sick lineup. That's really fun. So what I, I had one, two, three, four, twelves, and two sixes. That banged. All right. Can't wait to be wrong about all of that. Let's see what happens. All right, we're back. Happy fiftieth, boys. boys. Happy fiftieth. Yeah. Raise the bat. Raise yeah. the bat. Really good fun to actually do something that's just like in a structure where you know what kind of the cost of everything, or at mm. least a limit to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And cool little six red wines. And honestly, I had a great deal of fun with these wines. There was a lot of bangers in here. I reckon this is the most wine I've bought ever on the show. Really? Yeah. I Is it because you knew they were all under 50? Nah, it's because they're all delicious. There was not one of these that I was like, ah, oh, this isn't for me. Anyways, uh, wine number one, uh, for me, absolute wine of the lineup. Oh boy, this was a great little wine to be welcomed back to. This is absolutely shit hot. Yeah, this Love is this. Delicious. It's fucking amazing. It's really, really, really good. I wanted 12. I wanted 12. Uh, I wanted 12. It's clean clean sweet. sweet. Let's go, baby. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, any guesses as to variety? Uh, Grash. I thought Gamay. I thought it was juiced up raspberries. Like, I had no idea. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lucky, what is it? But, Whoa! Uh, what's this? This is really good. This could be that Grash. This could be. What is that? that, is that? What is that? Hughes. Hughes and Hughes. Oh, this is Tazzy. No. No. What is it? Tazzy. Tazzy Gamay? Tazzy. Uh, Tazzy. No, Tazzy. Dornfelder, Merlot, Merlot Gamay, Chardonnay. Chardonnay. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> What's even what? So, yeah. So cool. yeah, no sulfur. Yep, there you uh, go. Oh, Jesus, that, that, Christ, that's that is stupid. I would never have pegged this from Australia. That smells bonkers. That's insane. That smells bonkers. <laughs> yeah, cool wine. Snap that up, like straight up. Get, get as much as you can before fucking we do. That is one of the wines of the year, for sure. That is insane. All right, well, 
Speaking of all the wines that aren't going to stack up against this wine, <laughs> uh, I really like this wine. I love no, 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 no. I should say it's a bit unfair. I love this wine too. I bought twelve. I bought six. Uh, I had thirty dollars for twelve. Twenty-two for twelve. Ooh. Yeah, bang. Let's get it. Oh, How much was it? Oh, 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 Spenny boy. Oh, oh, oh. That is Spenny. I still buy it. What is? Beaujolais Nouveau, which is you're kidding. Nouveau. You're kidding. Well done. Just nail it. Did you know this wine? Uh, no, I've never had this wine. I've never had this producer. Before. Well done. But I just it's it's strawberries. Strawberries. It's absolute strawberries, yeah. and that's Gamay. Where's the where's the where's the crown? He just guessed that. Where's he just the nailed that. Button? It's over there. Just get the crown. Yeah. Yeah. Just get the crown. Yeah. Superimpose it on my yeah. head. <laughs> Super good. I love the label. Yeah, French kiss. Uh, I agree because if you drink enough. Beaujolais Nouveau, you probably want to French kiss anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wine number three. Wine number three. Uh, Cabernet Franc, I reckon. Uh, it's it's that kind of rich chocolatey thing, but it's got some brightness. It's got that kind of uh, like nice tannin structure, a bit of peppery thing. It's just medium bodied. It's Loire Valley Cabernet Franc. Yeah, I thought it tasted like a uh, Christmas cake and it had like this sort of yep. like dried fruit that's yeah, been stewed totally. in alcohol sort of thing. Totally. Um, and then I was also thinking that it might yep. be like a bit of a whole bunchy because there was a bit of like green towards the back for me, but then again, again all I, these, if I you think, consider crown. Cool. What do we got, Lachlan? Uh, what is it? I reckon, you're, okay. I reckon you're on with that Cabernet Franc number. I reckon you got it again. Double crown. What the hell? <laughs> Tanner. Chat it. Sure. Okay. Did this seem like 12 hours of skin contact? Because Tanit is the most Tanit grape yeah. variety on the... That's why it's called it's, Tanat. It's a no SO2 Tanat. Also, one of the few grape varieties that's a palindrome. This... Yeah, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Such a useful fact for consumers. <laughs> no. I'm really glad that um, you went there because I was going to make like a Christopher Nolan Tenant joke. Yeah, much yeah. much like Christopher Nolan's film Tenant, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I really enjoyed it anyways. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's actually this, really good. And you can drink it backwards because it's a palindrome. And so it's like Tenant. Oh, it's a whole thing. There's some really interesting shit about this. First, I, again, love the label. Sorry, love yeah, the wife. packaging. Awesome. Um, these are pre phylloxera Tanat vines. Right. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, from uh, Mataran, which is, all, uh, I'm guessing, Southern French. Um, uh, farmed by uh, Christine Dupuy since um, 1993. And no SO2 uh, at yeah. all, and uses carbonic maceration to be able to sort of lift it out of... Tan tannic can be like really... Stupidly tannic. Yeah, abrasive. Like, it's really good as a blending component is usually what yeah. winemakers say. Um, yeah. To see like 100% tannic, like this kind of gives me a lot of faith in the that's, variety. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Moving right along. What have we got? Uh, number four. Uh, I reckon Nero. <gasps> I reckon Nero. Dude. I need it back. It's what do you think, nerd? It's definitely wanted some. Six bottles, 28 bucks. Three bottles, $42, please. Ah, uh, six for 35. Oh, yeah. Ooh. The magic this number. So if this spot. is Nero, this is going to be the call I'm most happy with throughout the entire show because I should not be able Grenache. to. Grenache! Grenache! Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> 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 we tried. Awesome. Well, I just always rain on me. Yourself, I don't deserve this anymore. One of the OG's uh, oh, originals what? of uh, Natty Wine Movement, James Erskine of Yalma. Makes the best Grenache in maybe Australia. Yeah, um, Ralph's Shiraz. With, with no at. Oh no, Shiraz! Fuck, that's. There you oh, go, Shiraz. Damn it, I, I, was, I was half right. you, If you've not tried any of uh, James Erskine's wines yet, yeah, you should. Uh, this is a great way to start. If you want Shiraz, to, you, want to, you want to change your mind on Shiraz rather than calling it your dad's drink, mm. try this. We're sort of change your mind. It's great. It's great. All right. uh, number five. I was not into this <laughs> because it tastes like a Nocte. It's, it's very it's, it's It tastes like a barrel. It's yeah. like, it's chocolate, it's vanilla, it's butterscotch. I don't taste any fruit. Yeah, you guys are saying like, yeah, it tastes like chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. And they're three things I like. Why would you not enjoy this? Like, I do like those things, but also I guess for me, when I'm drinking wine, I want to taste grapes. Yeah. I don't taste grapes. I don't, I don't know what the fuck it is. Should we find out? Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. Uh, I wanted a glass. At, uh, I reckon it's going to cost $48. I went 45, I wanted three. Uh, I went 20 and I wanted six. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think I don't understand what's happening here. All right, all right, how are we going? Wow. Okay. Up it. <laughs> is, 20, is, is, is eight the new 999? 28. Yeah. Has it been a Montepulciano de Abruzzo? Monte. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so very, very, very high uh, octane Montepulciano. Big, yeah. bold, and rich. Lower, uh, I'm surprised with the acidity. Usually, like, uh, Monty has a little bit more lifted acidity. Could just be a vintage thing. Um, I said an affordable uh, Monty. It is. Uh, there's there's Montys from Australia that are probably just as affordable. And better. 
It's not often I say this on the show. Don't listen to what they're saying. This is delicious. <laughs> like, this is a really good cool oh, no. wine. If, if you don't understand why it's not what they want it to be. If, like, this is 100% I'm so true. into that. There this are, is 100% true. There are true. people out there that will like this wine. I'm just saying I'm not wanting to. That's cool. Yeah. It's starting to smell like, like really good Italian coffee. Now. I feel like you, I feel like you can put milk in that. Like it's you delicious. Can. You can it's put got milk so in much that. lactose oh, in it anyways, so it's already it. got it. Alright, yeah. well moving on to something that I think is more delicious. Yeah, it's uh, great one. I like this. <laughs> yeah, this was great. I like this a lot. Yeah, a whole bunch of kind of Pinot thing. Uh, definitely 38 bucks. Yeah, it's the it's, yeah, the, it's, it's, it's the uh, <laughs> basket range number. Yeah. Uh thirty-five dollars, twelve of them. Uh thirty-five dollars, three of them. Thirty-eight and six. Yeah. Inflation. Inflation, yeah. <laughs> dude. You say the price of diesel, probably. Yeah. Oh. Hey, BKY. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of the really good ones. Yeah, one of the best ones. Equal favourite winemaker from the Adelaide Hills called Brendan. Uh, <laughs> suck up. I'm take as a real big compliment. Thanks oh, you're not number one. <laughs> <laughs> There's other, other random. Settle random down, thing. number seven, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, if you've not tried any of BK's wines before, where have you been? Uh, and if you have, like, you know how good this is. Um, mm. He generally spends his time making some of the Australia's best Pinot and Chardonnay, uh, but it's always good to have a pure juice, aka pure juice, yeah. uh, Pinot Noir Cabernet Franc, little blend. Well, honestly, all of these are amazing, but this is an absolute no-brainer. I'm such a massive fan of this. Like, this is crazy. You just get wines that blow your mind, and that's a blow your mind kind of wine. Amazing. 50 episodes, boys. Hey, <sighs> and to another Cheers. 50 more. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao! Bye!